Hello, I'm Javis Lewis, and today I'm going to show you how to build a searchable table view in iOS. So that's that thing that pretty much looks like this. You press a button, you enter some text that filters the results, and then it comes back with those. And it's a bit tricky to build them. I've written an article about this in 2013, in addition to what you can or cannot find on the glorious Apple documentation um, with a full demo project. It was called Table Search 2013, and in the same spirit, I've now, I'm now going to create Table Search 2014, uh, updated for iOS 7. So let's have a look at what we're going to do today. First, we're going to create a standard UI table view, and we're going to populate it with some dummy data, just some numbers, one to 20 or 1 to 10. Then we're going to add a search bar to the top of that table view that allows users to enter some text and then it will display the filtered search results instead of all our results. And we're also going to implement a function that will hide the search bar when we don't want to see it because by default it just lurks around at the top and it's a bit ugly and it's in the way and we don't always want to see it. The tools we're going to use for this are Xcode 5.1, that is the current App Store release version, and we're going to demonstrate this for iOS 7.1. We're also going to make it work on iOS 6, so we're going to be totally backwards compatible. And uh, a real device is not necessary for this exercise, so I'm going to focus on the iPhone simulator here. So without further ado, let's get started. How do we do this and where do we start? Well. First of all, we're going to start with the Xcode single view application template. And uh, in it, we're going to pretty much delete everything that's there. Uh, and we're going to replace the standard view controller with the UI table view controller. And we're going to replace that in the storyboard as well. And once we've populated that with our dummy data, then we're going to add a UI search display controller. And that's a very sharp spanner in the iOS toolbox. And we're going to see why in just a moment. And then once we've done all that, and once we can search our table view, we can then uh, add an action that will hide the search bar from our display. And we're going to hide it when the app loads as well. Let's take a quick look at how a table view actually displays search results. Well, if you display everything, you basically display the standard table view, as I like to call it, with whatever the data source has to offer. But the UI search display controller overlays its own table view on top of it. So iOS does that very elegantly. It, there's no um, push segue or any sort of other segue visible. It's just replacing one set of results with another. And the UI search display controller is the guy that does that for us. So he does the heavy lifting. Now let's see all this in action and hack some code. Okay, I'm going to start with a brand new project here. And this one's going to be a single view application. I'm going to call it table so it's 2014 for iPhone only. I'm going to create a Git repo for that one as well. Uh, it looks like I had a project by that name, so I'm going to replace that. There. So the first thing we're going to do is that standard view controller that's been created here as part of the template. We're going to get rid of that. Move to trash. Always good. And while we're here, let's create a brand new class of that. So Coco Touch Objective C class, and my subclass is going to be UI Table View Controller, and in fact I'm going to call this Table View Controller. Hit next and save it here. Very cool. Let's go into our storyboard here, the main dot storyboard file, which comes with a single UI View Controller, and let's select that and. Get rid of that as well. So we start with a clean slate here. Right at the bottom right here, I'm going to select instead of a standard view controller, I'm going to select a UI table view controller and drag that in. So this is very cool. Before I get started here, I'm going to embed that in a navigation controller. And that gives me that extra navigation bar at the top here so we can place the little button that will hide and show the UI search bar later. We're almost done here. The table view controller itself needs to look at my new custom class. 
which is just called oops, table view controller and my cell in the table view so it's not the table view uh, or the table view controller it's now the table view cell I want to give that a reuse identifier we need that later so that the table view controller subclass can talk to those particular cells so I'm just going to call it cell the only other thing I'm going to change is the table view style I'm going to make that basic so that we have a text label here I'm going to maybe space that out a little bit so that it looks a little bit better when we run that app. Okay, that's us done here in the storyboard. Let's have a look at the file. We're not interested in the header file today. There's nothing public that we need to do here. We're going to do everything in the implementation file. Uh, first, I'm going to collapse all those methods here. And because we want to display some data, I guess the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an array property that will hold some dummy data for us. So my property is going to be an NS array, and I'm going to call it all data. To populate that and initialize that, I'm going to come down here and do that with a custom initializer. It doesn't really matter how you do that. You could initialize this array in the view to load method. I prefer to do this with a custom initializer. And we're just gonna ask if the synthesized property or data does not exist or is nil, then we're gonna initialize it going to use an array shortcut here and I'm going to populate it with words 1 to 20 or 10 perhaps okay that should do it the only other thing I'm going to do is then return our variable so if anyone asks for self.alldata then this method is called and if all data appears to be empty then we're creating it and if it's not empty then we're just returning it. Very cool. So we have 10 values that we can display, 10 string values. Let's look at our table view data source and correct those methods here. Xcode was kind enough to provide those for us. So the first one is number of sections in table view. Let's have a look. We, I'm going to get rid of the warning here. It's just a reminder by uh, that Xcode puts in that if we don't do anything about this, it comes up with warnings, with deliberate warnings, and we don't want that. Um, and we're only going to have one section in our table view, so I'm going to return one and turn my attention to the number of rows in a section. And that, of course, needs to return the amount of items that we have in our all data array. So let's get rid of that warning again. And here, return self all data count. So that will count everything that's in my all data array. All the items, which should be 10. So there we go. That's that. The third method that I want to have a look at is the table view cell for row at index path method. Uh, they've commented this out here. I'm not entirely sure why. Probably so that you can use it with static cells. We're using dynamic properties here. And the first thing that we're going to do is when the table view cell gets initialized here with the DQ reusable cell identifier method, we want to replace this with the string that we set in our storyboard, which is the cell's reuse identifier. So we've called it cell. This must match. If this doesn't match what you've put in the storyboard, you're going to have a problem. Also, while we're here at this method, uh, looking at the DQ reusable cell with identifier thing, it comes with an addition here for index path index path and if you're developing apps for iOS 5 and you leave this bit in then that will crash your application it doesn't really make a difference if it's here or not so I prefer to take it out and as of iOS 6 I believe that addition was made and there was just no mention of why that's here but uh, iOS 5 doesn't understand it so if you take that out then you're compatible with iOS 5 if you want to go down that route. If you're iOS 6 and 7 only leave it in by all means I'm going to take it out. 
And now let's configure the cell. So what we want to do here is because we've used the basic cell layout, we have a property in the cell, which is a text label, and that's um, cell text label text. And we're going to put the element of our array in. So we'll go self all data object index index path dot row. So we're being given an index path here. Uh, this method is called repeatedly for as many times as we have objects in our data source. So in our case, it's 10 times. And every time the index path dot row for each row of the table view is going to be different. So we'll put the object at the index of our row into the text label text property of our UI table view cell. Makes sense? I hope it does. Let's run it and see if it works. Okay, looking good. Table view is displayed with the numbers 1 to 10. If I click on any of them, nothing happens because I didn't tell my app that something should happen. So perhaps before we move on, if I select the cell, I would like the gray thing to go away and uh, potentially also I'd like to take the whatever's in the cell and put it at the top here. So this is the self title property of my uh, navigation view controller. So let's implement that next. So that app does something. For this, I'm going to implement a fourth method of our table view delegate data source group here, and it'll be table view did select row at index path. Somewhere down here. Did select row at index path. That's the one. So this method gets called whenever someone taps on a cell. And what I'd like to do is I'm going to set up a string property. I'm going to call it title. I'm going to put that cell's title label in there. Cell for row at index path, index path, which is what we're getting here. And in it, I'd like to say text label text. And then I'll say self title equals title and last but not least I'd like to deselect that row so uh, table view deselect row at index path index path animated yes okay if we run this then that functionality should be there two four five six and one perfect in our next video we're going to look at how we can make this table view searchable the free portion of the video ends here, but if you'd like to see the full version, you can. Just sign up to my member section on my iOS dev diary at pinkstone.co.uk. Membership, as you can imagine, has its benefits. For example, you can get access to all the full-length screencasts I've done on this topic. You also get access to hundreds of detailed articles with tips and tricks on iOS development, meant to be understood and written in a way that you can actually follow them. Membership also comes with a convenient bookmarking feature. Articles that are more relevant to you, you just bookmark and you can recall them right there on the website. We also have flexible membership terms, so if you'd rather join for shorter periods of time or for an entire lifetime, we've got you covered. So what are you waiting for? Get access to the good stuff right away. Sign up now at pinkstone.co.uk and I will see you on the other side.